Oh, man. Freaking YouTube. <laughs> Sorry, hard way to start the video off. Once again, I got jacked just as I was coming online. Anybody who's not familiar, it takes me a minute or two to get the stream worked out. Any friggin' time you want, pewter. I don't even know if I'm streaming. What the hell? This is weird shit sometimes. It's really spooky sometimes when you do a live stream and just, everything is perfect. Everything looks good. Still not sure if I'm streaming. You have to give me a minute. The comments are to the left. We're actually live streaming. We live stream every night around. Let me check my audio. Looks okay. Looks good. There it is. Oh, you know what's going on with that too. I also went a little wider with the screen. I'll try a little wider tomorrow night because it looks like it's streaming good. It looks like the audio is matched up. That's good. Yeah. Heaven. Uh... Here we go. Hi, folks. I'm going to have to catch you up in a second. I'm going to have to catch you up in a second. I'm watching your comments. Just got to click my thoughts after that experience. That's the whole problem. You spend two hours getting ready and you go to go live stream and the video jumps and won't start. And everybody's there waiting. And so it really puts a lot of pressure on you when it happens at that point. So it kind of catches you off guard. Once again tonight's uh, headlines are Fukushima proves, is proof that the pro-nuclear advocates out there, the lobbyists in particular, but the pro-nuclear, the green, the global warming enthusiasts who are demonizing everybody for the tin cans, their pop bottles, and their cardboards when there's 90,000 ships on the ocean and that 16 of those ships produce more pollution. These are the bunker-burning, uh, transatlantic, trans-Pacific, cross-the-ocean type ships that are taking 5,000 containers uh, transport truck containers with them and so that 5,000 uh, container ship I can't even come up with the proper name now these creatures anyway one of those produces more pollution than all the cars in Canada Australia and New Zealand combined up to 50 million cars per ship 90,000 ships on the ocean is the animosity equivalent of 42 trillion people on this planet every day driving automobiles not sitting around but driving automobiles each day and so the whole thing is to flip it on you, keep you in this little paradigm where you're the problem, where you're the issue, and it's not. Global warming is based off 100% uh, radioactive materials released into the environment. This is pure energy. You know how a big lighter puts off energy. And it's a very visible, easy to see, relate to energy where... You know, you feel the heat, you can see the flame, right? Well, nuclear energy is is different. The release of the radioactive isotopes. And thanks, Mickey. I got your comment there earlier. That was a uh, hangout. I got two comments there I'm going to touch on before I get down this road here. That was there earlier. Not bad. I'm just not saying nothing. I'm just saying... I got two comments I wanted to cover very quick. Mickey Smith says, All history books have altered, have, well, he meant to be altered, have been altered to fit the elite's use of nuclear power and weapons. Money for nothing and death for free. And I got a good giggle out of that. I did. I thought that was pretty cute. And so I snatched it and I'm reading it to you now. And MSVS is a new commenter on the site. Well, that's the best tea I had today. If the entire contents from three nuclear cores were washed completely into the ocean and distributed evenly, it works out to about two ten thousandths of a gram per liter. So if you took two ten thousandths of a gram of the hot coriums and put it in a liter or say a glass of salt water, for instance, for starters. And so you got two ten thousandth of a gram. We're not talking time of stuff that was in the fuel pools, the 122,000 rods in each of the fuel pools that are missing. 
and that were dispersed and atomized and are into chunks and are producing their own isotopes till the end of time because they're buried under 100 foot of topsoil somewhere all over the site because the detonations on the site. We're not talking about that stuff. We're just talking about the coriums that have sank out of their, came out of their containments in the first few days. Mm -hmm. They left the containments. Uh, I'm going to cover all that in a second. Hang on. And so MSVS says, now we don't know if this is accurate or not, but we're going to go with it. And so here's the way I want you to think about that. Is two ten thousandths of a gram of the hot coriums, the radioactive material, the plutonium, uranium, which is what the reactors run onto, which is what the rods are made out of. Everything else is a byproduct. Uh, and you had a glass of, okay, I'll back on track now. We had a glass of salt water, and that glass of salt water is around 75 million to 100 million phytoplankton. They are the base of the food chain. And so if you dropped two tenths of a gram, two ten, two ten thousand of a gram of the hot coriums into that glass of water with not only the 75 million to 100 million phytoplankton creatures in the ocean per cup of salt water, which makes the oxygen and is the basis of the food chain. Not only would it kill all of that, but it would kill the trillions of other creatures that are in that cup too. Because it's not just phytoplankton in a cup of salt water. But in that cup, there would be 75 to 100 million phytoplankton, the very basis of the food chain, and oxygen. That can't be good. Okay, so we took that cup, and then we dumped it into a liter of salt water with around 400 million phytoplankton and a few hundred trillion creatures and animals, because the ocean is a super life, folks. It truly is. Every speck of it is, is jostling with life. Anyway, and you dump that glass with two ten thousandths of a gram of the hot coriums, which are producing isotopes on their own, you would kill everything in that liter pretty friggin' quick. But those creatures that you put in there, the two ten thousandths of a gram of the hot coriums, are far from uh, running out of energy because they're plutonium and uranium. And the uranium is good for 4.5 billion years. And so you can carry out that process for 4.5 billion years. Dump it into 2 liters of salt water with a billion phytoplankton creatures that make oxygen on the very basis of the food chain. And it'll zap all of them. And think of how that the isotopes just constantly coming out of 2, two ten thousandths of a gram. Because we're talking about the hot coriums. We're talking about a chain reaction. We're talking about a monster that is not supposed to be anywhere in our environment. And that all the spent fuel pools and all the rods, they're there because they can't build a containment to put that in. But their licensing say that that's what they do. Their licensing agreement to have the plant in the first place is that they're going to put that. And that's what they tell everybody. Oh, the NRC is watching them. And checks and balance. Oh, yeah. Of course, we know what the NRC, Allison McFarland, who had to make the unimaginable statement on the Senate floor, perjured herself, that the U.S. government, who actually has models of cesium 137 dispersions for a 40 day period after Fukushima, showed the entire North America blanketed severely. That didn't include, you know, the iodine 132, the iodine 133. And all lives, half-lives are times 10, right? And so iodine seems pretty innocuous, like uh, 132 and 133, when you think about a two or three day half-life, where iodine 131 is an eight day half-life. All that stuff seems innocuous, don't it? Uh, but it's not. It's far from it. It's times 10. And it, uh, how long does it take the jet streams to bring it across the ocean again? I'm sorry, I can't hear that. Uh, just a couple of days if the winds are slow and the jet streams of course are always moving faster because of global warming which is radiation into our environment at an accelerated pace over the last 70 years they dump it into the oceans they have open pits they release it from the spent fuel pools uh, they boil dry if you don't keep putting water in it so what do you think that boil dry what what does that mean well it means to you to the spent fuel pools are evaporating all the time. They always got to pour water constantly into it 
or the levels go down and they will explode. It's coning coatings when they're not underwater. Not only that, the neutrons, you won't be able to never get near the plant. That's supposed to stop it. But it doesn't, see? But what so in order to get around that, they have lobbyists and pro nuclear agencies and pro nuclear speakers, and their job is to go out and loy and muddle the water and equate everything with a nuclear plant with with less whatever comes out of a nuclear plant is less the normal everyday background radiation, which is impossible to do. You would have to extract the radiation from that. You can't extract the radiation from anything. They've had um, extractions of liters of water at Fukushima were still 20,000 becquels. It's just a law so they can sell the product and someone will buy it. And you can get the governments to fund billions of dollars. Glory, get some of the radiation. That's pretty freaking good. You can't even store it in a container. You can't even build a container. How do you think they can build anything that can do something else with it? If you can't build a container. It's, an, it's ludicrous to even say that. And so every university out there, um, they're garbage. They're the other garbage on the planet. They're the betrayal of the planet. They're the sellouts to humanity itself. And just to go back to uh, MSVS's comment again, two ten thousandth of a gram. Just imagine if that was true, right? What would happen to the ocean? There'd be zero oxygen. There would be zero life, right? So we're not talking about stuff that's hemorrhaging out into the ocean, which is the isotopes and doing the exact same thing. And we're not talking about the aerosol, the clouds, how it picks it up and lugs it all around the coastline, how the dispersals came over our countries and then the rain washes it back through all your communities. All right? So all your rivers and all your communities are going to be radioactive. And then, of course, the big rivers are pouring in other estuaries and ponds. And so you're causing mutation, minimum, and even with low-level background. I should never say those words. Uh, but the low-level, because it's so deadly, is still deadly. Right, 50 becquels will damage your organs permanently. Living in an environment with 50 becquels of radioactive materials, not the potassium-40, which has been on this planet all the time, not the indigenous uranium that they named uranium-238, because that's what's left over from the production of nuclear waste. And if you got a Dixie cup of that, that'll kill everybody in a room, in a heartbeat. They can't survive if they walk through the room, let alone stay in the room for an hour. They will die. Because you can't escape, you can't escape that creature, the raw creature itself. That's why they got it, poured 450 billion gallons at Hanford into the ground. Because they can't contain it. And that was the only way, because they got 500 square miles out there, and so they can dump it 400 square miles away from them at the plant. They've had to evacuate 20 acres at Hanford's because of hot fruit flies and wasps that have some radioactivity on their leg. And then they have to go in and find out where they land and take that and bring it out and throw it in a nuclear dump. Saw it off and take it out and throw it away and build something else there. Because they caught it early. Because it radiates everything. That's how deadly it is, truly toxic it is. Uh, like California again had 1,500... Buckyballs per cubic meter of air. These are radioactive atoms. Sulfur. And this was a phenomenon from spraying salt water on the reactors, which has never been done before, and there was no study about that because nobody ever thought somebody would actually do something like that. Because you never thought... They never thought about that, I guess. I guess they did think about it. But spraying salt water on coriums creates these balls which makes them easily trans uh, are non salutable so they don't salute and they're so tiny they're they, they can float right across the ocean in normal winds let alone get propelled up to the jet streams picked up and liberated because they don't salute in the water conventionally and so they can be re-liberated into the environment over and over and over and over for the lifespan of it which is whatever it ingested if it ingested a strontium particle 
they're all hot particles and it turns into little nuclear engines. You ingest one of those, you're going to get cancer. It might not kill you, but you'll spend most of your assets trying to stay alive. Because all cancers affect you really bad. And there's a link below, DCA. Go look up turmeric. Uh, DCA, by the way, cures 70% of tumors, reduces them, all tumors by 70% rather, in three weeks. And study after study after study. There's no money in cures. You don't need a pharmaceutical. There's no patent on this. It's just a natural mineral. But it has a phenomenal... And all they're doing is adding it to water and drinking it. It's not like they got to get some scientific extract and they got to take out a molecule, and, right? Which is, that's what they do to get patents. So they make it prohibitively expensive to replicate it anyway. And it's not going to cure you. It never will. There's no cure out there by a pharmaceutical company available. Right? They want to radiate your entire body, kill every cell in your body in a hospital with chemotherapy and hope you survive it. That's why you lose all your hair, see? Because you kill all the cells in your body. Uh, and it's the most despicable thing you can do to another human. It truly is. It's the stupidest thing imaginable. And But because they got all the PR, nuclear PR pro industries out there, Right? Anybody that uses nuclear technology to make money is a monster. They're truly a monster. There's no way they can escape not knowing what this stuff really does. And then the NRC, whose job tells you all the time, oh, no, we're going to keep it locked up in, in uh, sarcophagus till the end of time, the byproduct. We only use it for nuclear power and bullets and, you guessed it, weapons. That they only, all they do with it is just test it. And blow it up here, blow it up there, drink a few beer, blow up another nuclear weapon, drink a few more beer. And take the brightest, sharpest minds on the planet and manipulate them, destroy them, and they're useless. They spend all their time trying to build something that they don't even understand, they can't contain. But they do anything for a dollar, do anything for a book, do anything for a paycheck. The people that are censoring me in the last week, I've been under heavy censorship, big surprise. That's because I hammered, I don't know, how many now? How many people have I hammered? How many nuclear apologists have we taken apart on this site? How many shills and sh uh, trolls have I tossed off this site? Again, I forget. I've lost count. Because they're despicable. They make me sick. They make me nausea. I can't stand to see them. And I have to go out and watch them all the time. I have to go out and listen to them all the time. I'm glad I do. Because how else are you ever going to know what the lies are until you listen to them tell it? And you'll disagree with what they're saying, but that, that doesn't change it. you still got to listen to it a few times and make sure you get a, a, a lot of their lies. But they tell endless lies. Like Ken Buesler from Woods Hole Inst Oceanographic Institution with 850 scientists, what the fuck are they using Ken for? They can't get a nuclear scientist? Where the fuck are all the nuclear scientists? They're all hiding away in the dark, afraid someone's going to shine a light on them. And they're going to open their mouth and get fired. <laughs> that's the whole problem with a nuclear scientist. He can't help but say some of the truth. And that's the opposite of what they can have out there. That's why they roll out uh, Jay Collins. Uh, Thunderfoot. He, he works at a nuclear power plant. A nuclear military industrial complex. That byproduct is power. And that's how they sell having that in your community. And they've never told the community, oh, by the way, you know, the fuel pools evaporate. We're releasing radioactive isotopes in your community all the time. You have radioactive fallout in your communities all the time. And that when uh, we have storms coming over our plant, it, uh, it liberates a whole bunch of radioactivity and deposits it in your communities, in your gardens, your playgrounds, um, everywhere. That's a fact, see? And it's, a, it's got no benefit to society. It serves no purpose whatsoever. It serves zero purposes. Every purpose that nuclear technology has, you could do something better. There's 4,800 peer review academic studies every day that are published. Not saying what's not published. And they're locked away. It's your copyrights. They lock that away immediately. You never even get to know it exists. If you took all those institutions that you are funding, that your tax dollars are paying for, and put them to work for you, you wouldn't be in the boat you're in now. You wouldn't have any of the issues you got now. 
You'd have all the solutions you ever wanted, you could ever dream, you could ever hope for right now. Right? And so, do you get it? Like That's a thousand hours an academic study, say. Some of them could be tens of thousands. Some of them could be no less than, uh, you know, because it's a study. And then somebody else had to peer review it, and other institutions had to peer review that. And so that costs a lot of money. You pay for that. You pay for the professors, the institutions, and then everything gets locked up. Every friggin' day. And is that a society? Is that the best we could fucking do? Is that the best we can offer? Of course not. We have technology where instead of putting nutrition in the food, we took it all out of GMO. I've covered it. I got 400 stuff. I got 400 headlines with lots of studies uh, way back that I done in a two-hour video just so I could shut everybody up that was pro-GMO. 400 studies, and what it boils down to, these are all the issues from not putting nutrition and any minerals in your food, taking it all out and putting five toxins in your food that don't even allow you, and those toxins won't let you uptake nutrients. And that it binds with your DNA, with your very DNA, and that you pass that on. And that, the, the, and that the, the, the problems with GMO are immediate. And then you need a healthy body to fight cancers because you're inundated your entire life. I mean, look at what they've done to Iraq and Afghanistan. Do you really think that stuff doesn't get up into the environment and travel over till the end of time? Because those bullets, 2.5 million a month, are dirty bombs. That's dirty bombs. They're uranium-238. They're not coated. They're not tipped. That's a dirty bomb. 2.5 million a month. There was 5 million rounds a month fired in Iraq and Afghanistan for 9 years. And uh, half of that came from McAllister's bomb manufacturing facility in McAllister, Oklahoma, and three other bomb manufacturing facilities in the United States. There's four of them. All they do is make... Uranium-238, which is left over from production of uh, nuclear uh, fission products, like the plutonium and uraniums, they're all contaminated with all these other heavy metals and these other radioactive materials. And so it's so important to realize that, you know, they employ a lot of people, not only in the military, but to make, make those bombs. And every one of those fucking bullets and bombs are dirty bombs. That's dirty bombs. Do you see the irony in this one? And then you got to listen to Fox and CNN and MSNBC and everybody else saying they got to grope you every day because Al Qaeda might come here with a dirty bomb and get you. Oh, yeah, get you good. Because that's the threat, right? And that's why they're groping everybody uh, at the venues. That's why they got all the terror, the terrorizing the children with media all the time that Al-Qaeda might blow up their school or their mall or their bus station, the TSA and the Homeland Security got to be there and got to grope you. Or you want to go to a football game, you got to grope you. It could be a terrorist, going to use a dirty bomb, going to use a dope pace, dirty bomb, and steal shit from your hospital and use it as a dirty bomb. You even heard that one, the Cobalt 60. You got any idea how stupid that is? You're firing all those bullets in Afghanistan and Iraq. You think they can't collect up those bullets and use that for a dirty bomb if they wanted to? They can just go dig up the soil alongside any of their rivers or alongside any of their homes because you shot it in all their homes. That's actually a dirty bomb. It's radioactive material. And the children are playing in it. you got nothing to be proud of. And you can't stop it unless a million people rises up and pounds them into the ground. And that's where we're headed. And don't turn them back now. They can't turn off what they've done now to Fukushima and all the cancers. They kept, on the National Security Act, they used that to silence everybody in the government from talking about radiation fallout in America and Canada. Right? And then they rolled out the Woods Holes and the University of British Columbia mouthpieces like Jay Cullen and Ken Buesler in particular. They're extraordinarily offensive people. Extraordinarily educated, unimaginably gifted, unbelievably talented, 
and they get out there and they lie, they manipulate nuclear material, which is insignificant, indigenous, everyday background radiation. And I liken it to you got to eat 29 million bananas a second to equal a single isotope from Fukushima. You know, like Jay Collins saying, oh, it's like getting an x-ray. No, it's not. If you ingest it, it never goes away. You get an x-ray, you walk away. It didn't put a whole bunch of isotopes into you. You got a blast of low-level radiation. We're talking about ingesting it. Now, he knows the difference because he gets all of his funds for the University of Victoria by studying low-level background isotopes. Just to very, uh, they only last for minutes or maybe an hour. Right? And so, all your money, you pay for all of this, by the way, all your money goes to fund this creature that wants to kill you and murder you and has won that that part of the battle now. Right? They knew what they were doing. There's so much proof now against them that this is, this was, uh, Right from the day they built these plants, that was the plan for an earthquake to take it out, or hopefully a tsunami, and then to have an endless release, and to kill uh, most of the people on the planet. That truly is a fact. You can't deny that. These are the power structures of our world. I mean, look at the Queen. She renovated the torture chambers a couple of years ago, three or four years ago, and she made $20 million her first year, uh, after the renovations on the torture chamber, scrubbed the blood off the walls. You know, where they got these racks and tables and stretching machines where they used to murder all the ancestors and, and loved ones of the people that went and visited. Where they tore them apart with machines for fun. They ruled by terror. And they still do. They still rule. They still run the show. I mean, Prince William and Prince Harry... Together, it's $300 million a year for their security. $300 million a year to protect them. $300 million of security chasing them around. That's a fact. So what's going on there? That's more money than they spent on Obama. Who knows who made a national security order, an executive order, that no one was allowed to talk about in the government Fukushima radiation followed. That none of the scientists, none of the institutions, and but they're all allowed to come out and lie, right? They're all allowed to. And for some reason, they all feel obligated to come out and just lie and say there's no way it can show up here. There's no proof of it showing up here. Just over and over and over, and then have people going around saying it's okay because in America there's an insignificant fucking little tiny spot. We allowed 90,000 becquels of uh, potassium-40 in your water because when you drink it, you off-gas 90,000 becquels of potassium-40 because that's how the body regulates potassium-40. It's like a thermostat or a cruise control on your car. But because of the law that said it was legal to have 90,000 becquels when it's usually seven or 8,000, and when you drink your glass of water... You off-gas it. When you get a shower and you suck in three liters of water, you off-gas the potassium-40 at the same time. Your body regulates it. It doesn't, doesn't, that's just the way it is. Like your body can't contain any more potassium-40. And it regulates. It truly does work like that. Because it's insignificant. And because we, that's how we developed to live in the environment where there was this insignificant, harmless that should never be in the conversation with E equals MC square background radiation. And then they equate 90,000 becquels because it's legal in some place that cesium-137 is okay too at 90,000 becquels. Right? So they make a jump that doesn't exist. But that's what they tell people. But they're not nuclear scientists. Oh, I made a mistake. But they go around constantly giving lectures, giving interviews, being quoted in the media. And the, and the media just constantly pumps them out there and never says, oh, by the way, you know, I looked it up and uh, he's crazy, but whatever. That'll never happen. And so there's no honor or no liability, uh, apparently, for the media also to run with a fake narrative as long as it comes from, a, you know... They will never quote the nuclear scientists. They're too busy quoting 
the PR firms and the lobbyists. The lobbyists don't use nuclear scientists to win an argument because people will destroy them and go after their their credits at the institutions where they were. That's what we, we have to do, but we can't find them. They're hiding away. And so there's the nuclear dummies, right, that works in, in significant parts of the industry but still qualify as certain... Well, they're, they're scientists. And then you got George Norrie. He pops them up on his, on his site all the time, those types of people. And, of course, you'll get a scattered good one up there, but they'll throw out the big lump of shit into the punch bowl every time. Oh, it's like potassium-40. Like the background radiation of a fucking banana. Of a banana! Somebody says something like that to me. I ever goes to interviews, I'm taking a banana with me. If someone says it, I'm going to stab in the fucking debt with a fucking banana on camera. I swear. I don't care. I'll club them, club their feet with the banana. Liar! Because that's how ridiculous it is. It truly is. A banana's got nothing to do with it. 12 backbones of potassium 40, you eat it. There's more radioactivity in a glass of water, but it's insignificant because when you drink it, you off gas it. You drink 90,000 backbones of strontium 90, and you'll puke and pass out and die. You can never get it out of your system. Same with uranium's, you know, 90,000 Beckwell glass of anything that's radioactive coming into nuclear power plants. Yeah, you're going to have a real friggin' bad moment, I can assure you. You can't smell it. You can't see it. You can't feel it. You can't taste it. You can't escape it. Right? It can be done to anybody. It's the, the most prolific killing thing on the planet. There's nothing out there can touch it for its longevity. Say if I got a whole bunch of radiation from uh, Fukushima MA and they cremate me, you liberate all those isotopes back into the environment. They float around for a couple of hundred million years, find somebody else, kill them. And they cremate them, they liberate those isotopes back into the environment. They'll float around for another million, millions of years, find another creature, they ingest it, it'll kill them. When they die, they'll cremate them, and they'll liberate those isotopes. And that'll go on and on for 4.5 billion years. That's how that's how fucked up that is. But no, it's like a banana. <laughs> well, you eat it, and then you off-gas. Right? That's what they want you to believe. It isn't ludicrous, because you can't do that, because these are man-made radioactive uh, isotopes and radioactive particles and radioactive atoms, because we aerosol them. And because I know this is hard to wrap your mind around, but we have this phenomenon on Earth that's called a jet stream. Yeah, I know, Dana. I know conspiracy theory. Fucking jet streams exist. But I got a lot of convincing evidence that they're real. And then we got scientists saying the plumes went up five miles and other institutions, they were up. Uh, plumes of one, iodine 131 went up nine miles. Forget about the uranium, plutonium. Fuck it. Who oh, fucking cares? Let's just talk about iodine. Don't want to give everybody a bad fucking day so they can make up their own minds. And if you live under the jet streams, well, you got huge deposits in your communities, huge deposits in your friends and your loved ones and your pets. And, right, so we had an event. And so you need, you need as a sign of good faith for the government, to hang Monsanto from street poles and then engineer like DCA and turmeric and anti-cancer agents, which we all know, um, that's, what, that's what the whole point is, right? Cancer can only grow in a, a, a pH environment, for instance. And so baking soda is actually good for cancer. And I got studies on that. But sugar is fuel for cancer. And so all your foods, all your corporate coffee is full of sugar. Go to any corporation, you might get 30 to 100 spoonfuls of sugar in your beak gulps. I know um, Kentucky Fried Chicken had 90 spoonfuls of sugar in their $3 beak gulp. 90! Spoonfuls of sugar. If your kid was eating 90 spoonfuls of sugar, you go like that, whack, right up the side of the head. 
You take him to the fucking doctor and ask him, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> Why is he eating 90 spoonfuls of fucking sugar, doc? But it's okay if a corporation does it. The cops, you know, if, if your kid went to school and said, yeah, I eat 90 spoonfuls of sugar, your teacher will call home the social service and they'll take that child away. But it's okay for the child to go to the movie theater and drink the corporate Pepsi and all these other fast food joints. It's not even food. Like, craft is not food. GMO is not actually not food. How can you survive cancer if you're going to eat GMO? If it's got no nutrients in it, it's got no potassium. <laughs> potassium is handy, let me tell you what, in this environment. And the magnesium. It hasn't even got calcium. They engineered everything out of the food. Everything in your corner shops is GMO. It's got no nutrients. Everything in your supermarkets is contaminated or is GMO and it's got no nutrients. But everything from Kraft is GMO. Everything. So eating Kraft will kill you. If you were to only eat Kraft only, you will fucking die. Because you got no nutrients. And you're eating the formaldehydes, which is a known carcinogen, engineered in your food to kill the insects, and you, you can't even wash it off. And the glossophates won't let you uptake your nutrients. They engineered it into your food. It never existed in your food. And so how can you survive cancer when you're up against something like that? I mean, the comparisons is 428 corn on the cob of GMO and a single corn on the cob of um, organic has more calcium than 400, than a truckload of GMO corn. And so if your baby food is all of this shit and your pet food is all that shit now, all your supplements, all your pharmaceuticals, your clothing, your pets, to your, or your toys for your children, the stuff your children are sucking on, those pacifiers, that's probably made from genetically modified or 65,000 chemicals that the EPA grandfathered in. And I know I digressed quite a long way that time because I wanted to keep on target myself anyway. It was about the pro-nuclear and, of course, I had a hard time getting on line, so I kind of lost it. Fukushima proves pro-nuclear advocates are mentally unstable. And it just went for 37 minutes. Man, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Um, let me bring up the page, because I'm not even on my page. We are rocking. 37 minutes, 33 seconds. And it tastes like cardboard, Snoodle said. Let me go down and read some comments. Ken Smith says, I just think so my questions regarding food now. I got no idea, Ken. Sorry. I'm sorry I like cats, says Char. Adam Salini says, uh, anything advertised or promoted on TV is poison. That's a fantastic comment and so true. And I say that all the time my, to my friends. And Dean Lachance says, oh, yeah, the reporter says they had built nice walls. I lost a comment. Hang on. I should find it. Nope, lost you. Man, you must have moved fast that time. Oh, I got it. Oh, yeah, the reporter says they had built uh, big new walls and a roof on uh, Building 4 at Fukushima. Anybody's not familiar with Building 4? Building 4 had... Two detonations. If the pools went dry, the earthquake originally lifted up all the buildings and broke most of their backs. Uh, building five and six were full of water, five and six feet of radioactive, extraordinarily radioactive water. They actually pumped that water into building four and building four, uh, three to put out the uh, fires. So they were pumping, uh, what was it, 20 million becquels a liter in on top of the hot spent fuel pools and so i'm just want to build you a picture now of building four building four detonated and so the rods in the fuel pool and the rods in the corium uh or in the cores apparently were out and up on the roof in the temporary fuel pools but i got conflicting headlines that i'm not going to bother with right now but i'm doing it for that and by the way that um 
Okay, I better not digress. And so Building 4 was hammered also with rods from Unit 1 and 3 that detonated and blew their friggin' tops. They were ten, they used to be 10-story buildings, but most of the buildings are missing. And the upper part, five stories of the building, six stories of the buildings, were all fuel pools. And each pool had 122,000 rods. The rods were 12 feet. They were in bundles of around 80. And so there was around 1,535 bundles I think the cores had around 3,400 um, bundles, was it? I got I done that recently, but I'm gonna redo everything anyway. And uh, the last couple of days, I don't even want to talk about it. It's been just hellish, and so I never got nothing accomplished. Still trying to get mobile with the brand new scooter that I got uh, three weeks ago. Still doesn't work, so it's just a nightmare. And so anyway, building four, the whole area was detonated with or or, or had projectiles from Unit 1 and 3 in particular because they blew their tops like firecrackers uh, and they were top all pools, right? And each pool is full. And so one of those rods is enough to kill all the mammals on the planet after it killed all the humans and everything else. One rod. There's 122,000 rods. And a gram of this stuff uh, it produces more radioactive atoms and all the grains of sands and all the beaches on the planet. And so we got all these rods that keep falling down even after. The whole site is littered with rods. And so there's no way to clean it up. Humans can't survive in that environment. And so what they've done was they brought in this Lego structure and you lay it there and you, you, the crane comes with another piece and the walls are brought in and they're laid on like a shelf. So they got like a, they got like a lip like that. So the walls come in and they land on a lip, and the, the crane drops it down, and that's how it locks into place, right? And they lift it up and slide it back down, and it actually locks into place. And then they bring in another Lego bar, and they lay it down. You won't see any scaffolding. You're not going to see anybody with a cut and torch, cut and shit. Out of the way. No picture of that, because you can't do that, because it kill you. Because there was a million sievers right at the gate of Unit 3. And all of these buildings, you're talking about these numbers, and say 500 receivers will drop you. You'll just go head down onto the ground, and you become nuclear waste. 200, you might make it home and survive a week with a short exposure if you're lucky, if you run. Like Chernobyl, they ran it on the roof for 15 or 20 seconds, then they went home and never went out on a nuclear power plant again. And a lot of them died, of course. Serious cancers. 15 or 20 seconds. And they done that day after day after day, removing debris until they were able to get further on the roof for longer periods of time because there was less radiation. They ran out and grabbed a little tiny piece with a little tiny shovel, threw it off the roof and then ran away as fast as you could. Went home and never came back. Fukushima, the hijacking, the homeless, the destitute, the immigrants, the vulnerables, of the most vulnerable of society, right? So they're attacking the most vulnerable of society. It's the most despicable culture imaginable, part of cultural culture imaginable that could do something like that. These are the most despicable. You know, they'll go down in the books forever as the most hideous people on the planet ever. No honor, zero honor, and zero cultability. No one to hold them account on us, right? The nuclear apologists. The lobbyists, the scientists, the, the institutions themselves, the media representatives are all pro-nuke. And so we ought to go burn them all to the fucking ground, which it doesn't seem like a bad idea to me because these are monsters. That's what's coming anyway. People are going to snap. People are going to friggin' snap when you find out what they've done to everybody. Because it's cumulative. Right? It's, it's still raining out for another decade. It's still filling up the ocean nonstop. You don't need the coriums going into the ocean to destroy the ocean. All those isotopes created by all those broken chunks of rods all over the site, all day, every day, being liberated and washed back down into the riverbed and flushed back out into the ocean because that's their old shit plan, that's their backup plan. Is this stuff sinks down onto bedrock and there's a natural but I mean like when you think about water 
uh, spraying water on a um, 9,000 degree Fahrenheit temperature is going to, a liter will expand 1,300 liters. And so that's an explosion, right? And so there's a lot of stories about it, but that site is cracked. But they did have big, a huge earthquake that rolled through that country for about 1,100 miles, right? That was an earthquake that rolled through that country. Right through the country, and it's recorded right through the country, damage where, you know, it dropped, say, 100,000 houses because of the damage of the earthquake itself before the tsunami even got there. And so then the tsunami came in, and that took out every power line, that took out the generators, that took out the ability to use to drive in there, right? So you had to wait for the that to recede. You had to come in with plows and plow your way back to the site for the fire trucks to get anywhere near it. There's so many heroes you can't. I can barely wrap my mind around it sometimes. Sometimes I fixate on that of the heroes and. Uh, their stories, we'll never know because there's an internet blackout, there's martial law in Japan. Japan is under martial law, officially. There's no freedom of the internet, no freedom of Twitter, no fear, freedom of Facebook, no freedom of YouTube. It's a repressed society. The entire country is actually extraordinarily radioactive. 300,000 becquels in any city in Japan, in any city. Tokyo is hammered. Tokyo has fallen a long time ago. They were planning on moving Tokyo a couple hundred miles west. Winds are from the prevailing in Japan from the west. And so the east is destroyed. It's annihilated. Millions of becquels everywhere. The sewage plants, right, the treatment plants, they have miles and miles of bags because they can't use it for fertilizer because it has so much cesium and strontium. There's 30 times more strontium because of the MOX fuel. And so wherever you hear cesium, you got to think about 30 times more strontium-90. Cesium attacks your heart right away. People died of heart attacks. There were 10 ambulances at least a day at Fukushima Prefecture's, uh, at the military industrial complex, uh, Diachi's nuclear power plant. There were 10 ambulances a day for the first year or something, two years, still is. But there's 10 a that's recorded, 10 ambulances going there a day taking people out. And they hide, they bury all the stats. But you can't bury all the stats. I mean, there's 5,000 of their workers in the first month at Fukushima Hospital with counts of five and 10,000 counts per minute in their body ingested radioactive t uh, materials, isotopes, hot, hot particles. The hot buckyball. I mean, you can't escape it. They're not warned about it. So what about all the homeless, the tens of thousands of the homeless that were thrown away like trash? Brought in, hey, go over there and see if you die. Huh? Just go that way. <laughs> That's what they've done to these people. And so they were the canaries in the coal mine. They would send the homeless into sections, and they still do. And if they don't die, then some of the bosses will go in there with the Geiger counters and just baby foot their way in there. That's reality. That's what they're doing down there today. That's what they'll do down there tomorrow, next year, the year after. They'll run out of homeless. They'll actually take all the migrants coming in. They'll use them. They'll victimize everything. And they're victimizing their own, themselves at the same time, for a dollar. No honor when the entire world wants to go there and help them. And, but that's the plan. See, that's the Billenberg Group's plan is you can't have that going out there. They want to maintain order. They want to maintain a slow, controlled squeeze of everybody. And so pharmaceuticals are given uh, immunity. And they're encouraged to develop... Uh, the most harmful, toxic stuff imaginable because that kills more people. That's the plan. It always has been. That's what a war is endless. That's what a misery is endless. That's what the 27,000 children have always died every day of dysentery, diarrhea, and pneumonia. Is, well, it's particularly in the last 30 years, has been constant. It's because they're fed GMO. It's got no nutrition. It's the dirtiest trick you could ever do to a starving person is give them GMO food. And so if you won't buy it, it's shipped down to the third world countries, right? And so everybody that's donating to Red Cross and everybody else is donating to kill these people, to victimize these people. Because you have a, unimaginable autoimmune deficiencies just from GMO. So when you threw all this radiation that everybody breathed in, and then nobody understands it so they can't 
fight against it. They don't understand there's that eating healthy is the only option you got. And and water, mountain water and spring water. It's very unique. It's like the DCA. Uh, like the DCA that kills cancer so effectively. There's links below about that. Well, the water, structured water, not the stuff that comes from your tap, right? But mountain water, spring water is unique compared to the stuff you drink in cities or you drink from like uh, supplied water because they put, some places put fluoride in it. That's So you, natural water that comes down the mountain paths or natural water a lot of the studies on it, of course, we're talking about radiated water, we're talking about radiated this, we're talking about radiated everything. And so, that's life, you can't change that part. But as a sign of good faith, our government can engineer, you know, nutrition into the food, could engineer toxins into our food, could take the toxins out of our water, could make sure our water is structured before we get it. That will stop cancers from growing. You could actually live in the environment, you could thrive in the environment, but you will still could be sterilized. You could still, all right, have uh, you know, issues like the cesium can give you a heart attack. It attacks the heart right away. The strontium can give you leukemias, but leukemia is your blood plating up and it becomes dysfunctional, right, and harmful and multiplies because of the cancer. But water and DCA stops that and doesn't harm your other cells, right, and it rejuvenates your blood immediately immediately okay I've covered this extensively I've looked at it I've been doing this for many years and that's how that works and so you know that's the whole point but low-level radiation yes could cause fingers to grow out of your shoulders or an extra leg to grow off your body and I gotta hang on here I know I grabbed one bizarre rare cluster of severe birth defects haunts health experts, NBC. Let me bring that, that up for a second. I just caught that before it came online. And it's about babies being born with sacks hanging out of their heads and stuff like that in North America. And it's they call it a mystery cluster of severe birth defects. Well, if you go down to Fallujah, you can study that. Because 70% of the babies down there got that happening to them because the military industrial complex took the uranium-238 from production of nuclear weapons, made it into bullets instead of putting it in sarcophagus, and shot it into those homes in Fallujah, the family cars, the schools, and everything else, the whole infrastructure, the water, the farms. And those, when they go through the air, they burn like, they become ir you're aerosoling radioactive atoms because right, it's going so fast it catches fire and then when it hits this target uh, it's creating all these pieces that's left over and that's x-rays and neutrons are coming out of that stuff and that's why 70% 80% of the children are born looking like lumps of flesh with no arms no legs no eyes no mouth and um, women don't want to have children there no more right so that's uh, extreme cases of low level radi what, what we call I guess we can't call it low-level radiation, but living in a radiated environment. But the stuff we're talking about from Fukushima is different again, much more deadly. Because it's cumulative in your soil, in your rivers, in your, particularly in your drinking water uh, from your local deposits. Because you like your community is usually dependent upon the biggest supply of fresh water in the area. And that fresh water is feed, fed by estuaries all over that area. Right, and so I got the headlines there of San Francisco where they're checking the water in these big bio hat uh, radiation suits, full gear, Geiger counters, checking the local water supply in San Francisco. Right, remember they had uh, 40 million Beckwells of iodine 131 in just a single bed of kelp off California recently. Right, you think about that. How, how can it be just at one spot? Well, you know, uh, the sewage and everything is running out, runs out into the ocean. They haven't had rain there for two years, but there's still water used, right? There's still, I say, uh, uh, big companies are watering their lawns. The big companies are using a lot of water. 
And so the radiation, you know, car washes is washing it off people's cars and is going into the supplies or the, the systems. I know they recycle everything, but they get rid of a lot too, right? And then the runoffs from all the rivers itself and the estuaries is unloading that onto the coastlines. And so you would expect to see really high radioactive material right along the entire coastlines of North America and the Pacific countries. It's not, and I know I do this all the time, but it's not just, because I always forget, which is really stupid, but it is all these other countries in the Pacific Rim and the Pacific Ocean. You know, we really do need people to translate this stuff uh, into different languages. I mean, that's part of the, uh, the reason I'm having that studio set up the way I wanted to do it was also so that we can do stuff like that so we can go after all those countries around the Pacific Rim and educate them. That's really important. They need to know, and no one, they'll never get to know, right? You're so We're all so lucky to get these narratives because they'll never get it. And once again, I'll end off by saying, what was the head of that headline? Bizarre cluster of severe birth defects haunts health experts. You have to go look that up yourselves, folks. I wanted to include it so, because that's an important thing. That's emblematic of all the radiation coming over from Fukushima. You expect to see more and more of that. And so that's a pretty startling headline. <clears throat> yeah, they, they got strange new diseases for everything. They got, oh, that's strange. It's a mystery. No, it's not, man. Your entire country was inundated with radioactive clouds over and over and over within a couple of days of the accident. And I got the models of the releases from the reactors that first year. It was nonstop into the environment. It was nonstop. Every time they had an earthquake, more rods fell down on top of those coriums, right? And they turned to radioactive atoms. Remember, grandma produces more radioactive atoms, particles, than all the grains of sands and all the beaches on the planet. You walk through that, that plume of those radioactive atoms, you ingest it. Then you grow cancer, and cancer is pretty slow growing, but this is a hot particles. Once again, think about the buckyballs and the link below. Think about all the links below. I did put another link below. Uh, Consolo, uh, Kevin, uh, Andrew, I think it's the second link, third link below. It's called uh, Good Chat and then the name of the video. But I was listening to it just before I got off and came on to here. And uh, I thought there was some really brilliant stuff in it. Uh, you know, it's like two hours, two and a half hours. But it's certainly, uh, it's, it's a good conversation. It's no problem to listen to it two times. Um, and I still hadn't been able to work out. I got to listen to it a couple of times. I only heard it once. But I'll definitely listen to it two or three times because there's a whole lot there. But it's kind of different. They're chatting. It's a chat. But they're on target pretty well the entire time. That's good enough, right? That's all we ever ask is people keep putting out stuff on target. And that's pretty cool, right? Because that, that gives you mine uh, another. And once again, I got all kinds of links below my video so you can get other narratives, folks. Right? There's lots of narratives. And I am producing a complete 360-degree uh, headlines, 360 headlines, and so I've been off my schedule for quite a long time now since I tried, since I got a scooter, but that's been broken. I've been consumed every day by telephone and emails. And, you know, it's really bad. And, and uh, it's really bad what they got done to me. I'm not going to go into it now. now we're, uh, but I'll be covering it all later when time is right. Anyone looking into hydroponics? Yeah. Good night, Char. Good night, Sergeant. Stetson. Reram, Albert, Snoop, Sergeant York, Awake No, Ken, Pam, uh, Dean Lachance, DeLimp, Kurt K, Penny, Miller, Marlboro, I drink um, Awake No, I said News Eye, MV, hang on, it disappeared. Yeah, start tracking your own phone. MSVS Kin again. Let me see if we can say goodbye. Good night to a few people. Uh, did I see Stacy Anderson that time? Looked like a diver dude. Don't use TV or you get, get these disinformed babies. Brilliant. I like it.
Stacy Anders said, Starlight, China, Bovines of the Apocalypse. Uh, okay, folks. DC, I'm just trying to catch a few people so we can say goodnight. Kill the last minute, last 30 seconds. I'll scroll way down, see who I runs into. I'm going to scroll way down. We got Albert, Fukushima's Revelations, Basic Data, Sergeant York. Let me scroll down, Knight Rider. What we got here? I goddamn computer. Dana. Hi, Thomas. Scotenberger. Hi. I'll never get that name right, man. I'll just say Thomas. But you'll find him in my favorites in the music section. He's extraordinarily talented. And looks like we hit her up to the end of the night. Want to be live 24? <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. And Pennier. We got checks and balances. Tracy May. Mr. Hemi. Fans Filtration. Thank you. We like you. You're a good soul. Janie Ferguson. You'll find her in my favorite, folks. She's a really talented lady. Gorgeous voice. Put a neat little video together. And it's not easy to do that kind of stuff and be able to sing, folks. Trust me, so enjoy it. Elizabeth M. Just passing through. Toxic. Uh, Lori Front remains. Remain C. I still have. I, why do I always have such a hard time with. Thank you, Lori. I have such a hard time with names. I but I always try. It makes me look foolish, I know, but I don't care. I'm just saying hi to everybody. Jill Clarkson. Penny Miller again. Um, we got John Towson, Stone again, Stetson again, Penny. There you go, Nuda, Kate, Yale C. We'll say Lisa is out there. She'll show up if I don't find her. And that's pretty good. I done pretty good that time. I always like that. I don't know why that appeals to me so much, but I really do like it. I guess because I read everything after. And I feel like if I don't say hi to everybody, I'm a shithead or something. Uh, but I get pretty caught up in what I'm doing. And I'm, I think I got the table, the, the, everything cleared now, so I can go ahead and finish the project. I might have to reshoot one or two parts, 17 parts to the project that I shot. Some of them are 10 or 15 minutes. I gotta edit everything down. And then I got to bring in the bootlick and lap dogs right into the, the different parts on top of that. And so all together, there's probably going to be around, I say 600, 600 parts. So it's going to be an hour and a half, two hours long. But it's going to be the whole picture, at least 360 headlines, and then all the bootlickers on top of that, and the other stuff. All right, so it's not going to be eloquent, okay? I'm not, a, I'm not some Andrew filmmaker with all that skill, okay? But I'll put it together into a platable package. And it's the whole package, right? And you can write books because you can figure out the entire thing now. Nobody can lie to you anymore. Nobody can manipulate you. And there's no question in your mind about all this important stuff. And so I'm working hard because I'm driven to get that out there. I don't care about anything else. I want to get that out there so everybody has the information, right? Everybody has the total story. That's so important. I realized recently that was missing because I can't even find it, the whole story like I got there. And so I had to create it. And I 360 headlines and then everything else I'm going to put in with it. So a huge, it's the biggest project I ever tried. I failed twice already, but I'm back again. <laughs> I'll get it. I just want it to be reasonable. I don't expect it to be perfect. And so we'll get that out because that's really important. I think that'll do more good than everything I can do every night to get her, is to get it out there so everybody has the whole picture, right? And so the people that are really seeking it out, they will find it. And uh, even if you never don't know a single thing about it, you'll know the whole fucking thing at the end of it. You'll know it better than I will at the end of it because I'm sunk into it so much. And I'm like, ah, yeah, there's fucking people dying here and dying there, blah. But everybody else, because they got all the energy, because they didn't have to go find it and hunt it and chop it and mix it. And blah, I'll catch you tomorrow. Because that's just the way it is. No job is too big for this one. I don't care. It's a perfect thing to be doing, so I'll be doing it. <laughs>